Hey, welcome. Welcome to Podcasting of Platforms. My name is Chris Spangle. It is great to have you with me here today. And on March 8th, we celebrated 10 years of We Are Libertarians. That was the podcast that I started back on May 8th, 2012 with my friends Creighton Harrington and Chris Galt. It actually started May 1st or 2nd. We recorded an episode and I didn't hit record, so it, it actually started in early March, but lost a lot of episodes in those early days. Believe me, if you haven't hit record on your uh, recorder, I was a professional at that, if anything, in the early days. But in the last 10 years, we've had such an amazing time creating this really cool project for libertarians and for ourselves more than anybody else. So just to go through some of the numbers of what's come out of this podcast that I started with my friends 10 years ago, here are some of the numbers. 5 million downloads on the what's now called The Chris Spangle Show. 2,799 episodes across all the different shows that we've had. We've had 328 patrons. I wish we had them all still now, but we have a great number of patrons. Some would say the greatest. 75 different co-hosts. 13 websites, seven different trips where I covered events, six live shows at a comedy club where we got people together, uh, five and a half marriages. I'll let you figure out the half, but my own marriage came out of this wedding, uh, out of this uh, podcast. Four different email newsletters that we've started. Uh, we started a magazine, and yes, one fist fight. So there's been lots of fighting too, but think about that. 75 different co-hosts hundreds of guests all these different episodes 2000 and what was it 799 episodes and all of that continues today we've got around uh, i think 15 different shows on the network it is now the we are libertarians podcast network and the chris spangle show we found through the 2020 election that people kind of got confused between the network and the podcast and so i split those two out and it also kind of uh, made it a little less, like people felt if they were listening to a We Are Libertarians podcast that they were being propagandized to become libertarians. And I didn't want people to feel that way. That's what's happening, but I don't want you to feel that way. Um, so, but think of that. I mean, really, out of all of this effort, so much friendship, so much community has come out of it. We've got 100,000 Facebook followers. We've got multiple groups that have come out of it. A Discord where people game with each other. And that is one of the coolest things about having a podcast is the community that comes out of that. That's really what I get out of it. I make a good living. I'm trying to raise more money through my Patreon and advertising and through doing things like this so I can do this full time as a career. But first and foremost is the friendship circles. You know, there's a group chat of 20 people that I talk to on a daily basis and we really just share our lives with each other. And that came around this mutual interest in libertarianism. And I wanted to share with you the 10 things that I have learned through the 10 years of doing my podcast. Um, and this is no in no particular order of importance, but I just wanted to, to kind of tell you what, if, if I could go back and talk to myself 10 years ago when I started the podcast, this is what I would say. Listen to your audience. I think it's really important for you to have constant contact with your audience. I recently just reached out to a bunch of our patrons. I think I talked to about 20 of them. I, to be honest with you, felt very disconnected from my audience. We we had a Facebook group taken away by Facebook for... I posted a meme of Jeffrey Dahmer at Five Guys and said, gee, this doesn't taste like Five Guys. And, and uh, immature, stupid, in a private group, yes. Part of those community standards, yes. Facebook's community standards, no. Um, and so they, they took the group from us, but it kind of alienated me a little bit from our audience. And so I didn't really have a, a, a good sense of what value my audience got out of it. So I decided to talk to the people that directly give me value through my Patreon. And I had a conversation with 20 different people that love the show. And I would have bet you, I would have bet money that growing the libertarian movement would have been the number one piece of value that I was giving my audience. And to a person, they all said, the value I get out of your podcast is that you bring me a balanced view of the news, and it helps me understand the world better, and I don't feel like I'm being bamboozled into one, into Team Red or Team Blue. And so that helps me adjust how I want to think about the future as a podcaster and how I want to craft my show and what I want to do with it. 
um, because it's important for you to understand what value you're giving to people and to understand what they're hearing. Because I'll tell you, I mean, I talk to people who thought I couldn't be more of a righty, and then I talk to people who listen to me because I'm a lefty. Like, even the people who support your podcast hear different things, but if you talk to enough of your audience, you start to kind of hear that consistent thread, and it can help you adapt your content to meet the needs of the people that you're talking to. Because really, giving value to your audience, giving value to your listeners, is the single most important thing you can do when you're doing a podcast. Um, number two, be ready to adapt as technology changes. When I started my podcast, I started with a tower computer recording into the computer. I was putting the podcast episode into the back end of my website that I think maybe podcast hosts existed at the time, but I didn't know about them. Now things are radically different. Just 10 years later, I'm on my third different podcast host, uh, which basically is the thing where the file is hosted. And, you know, that has changed how, you know, the it has advertising revenue attached to it, um, which has completely changed. I mean, I pay my bandwidth. I get basically have free podcast hosting because of the ads that we place through the different episodes of the podcasts. Um, you know, the board that I'm recording in, the Rode Podcaster Pro, this was a, five years ago, it was a five- foot tower of equipment between mic processors and the board itself and headphone jacks and sound effects boards and it's all now in this thing that is the size of like a 13 inch macbook uh, so it's really cool to have all of these different technological changes and you're gonna want to upgrade but you don't want to get stuck too long in the same place i have worked with people who have used the same technology for a long time and they get stuck and it it, the longer you use a piece of technology, be it a software or a hardware, it gets harder to adapt. So just think about adapting and trying to keep an eye on some of the software stuff. The content is the most important thing, but part of podcasting and the fun of it is the new gear and the new equipment and the new software and the new all this stuff, right? So make sure that you keep an eye on that stuff. Invest in quality. One thing that helped us stand out early on is that everybody was using Blog Talk Radio, which was like a call-in platform. So it sounded like you're listening to people talking to each other on voicemail, and it was terrible. Um, and so I knew that one way I could stand out was having a really good-sounding podcast. Now, that leading advantage has kind of disappeared over time as things have become so much cheaper, and it's a lot easier. But it means your competition is stiffer. You've got to sound good. You've got to sound really professional or else people are going to bounce. They're, they they had a little forgiveness back then. Not much, but a little. Now they have no forgiveness for bad sound quality. So if you're going to do a podcast and you want it to really succeed and it's not just kind of a fun little hobby between you and a couple friends and you're okay with five listeners, you got to really invest a little bit of money. Um, you will want to quit. <laughs> this is a yearly thing that I go through. I have since all 10 years. I want to quit. I don't want to do my show this week. I just want to sleep in on Saturday morning. I don't want to have to wake up with the pressure of doing an episode. I don't want to, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm, man, I don't want to book it. Oh, I got to do a bonus episode tonight. I'm tired. I'm burnt out. Uh, nobody's listening. I haven't gotten any new patron Patreon members in three weeks or a month, or maybe I've got no Patreon with the Patreons. But it, there's always a reason. You're always I, I'm maybe I'm a negative person, but everybody that I talk to has that moment of self doubt. Usually around nine months, um, and every nine months there's just a moment where you're like, I want to quit. But if I had quit. I wouldn't be married to my wife. I wouldn't have the great friend circle that I have. I wouldn't have a second income. And so that's why I always tell you, find something that you're really interested in because you're going to want to quit and you have to just keep going. Uh, because I have always found that I look back and I go, I'm so glad I didn't. I could have just vegged on the couch and not put in this effort to do this thing. But my life would be so much poorer without the experience. Uh, make it a group project. And by this, I don't just mean have different co-hosts, but there's somebody in your audience that will want to do Canva to help you do promo images. There's somebody in your audience that wants to edit video. There's somebody in your audience that wants to write articles for your website. There's somebody that wants to start a magazine and they need your clout to help push that. There's some, there's a lot of people listening that want to help. And 
by having that, you know, going back to listening to your audience and talking to them, you're going to identify those people. Don't be afraid to throw up a volunteer board and say, hey, I can't pay you, but I'd love for you to participate in this group project. You know, always make sure that people know that, like, this is your group project and that you're kind of managing things. And people have respected that throughout, but they've loved that they don't have the responsibility sometimes that they have somebody uh, that is out there kind of helping recruit people so they can kind of become friendly with others. And that leads to the next one, which is always be recruiting. Because if you're going to have those positions and those openings, make sure that you are recruiting people to fill those positions because burnout happens. People get busy. The people who were involved 10 years ago are no longer involved because they're married now and they have kids or they have a different job or they were college students and now they're adults. They can't make fart jokes on the radio, right? Like, So you're always going to have to be recruiting co-hosts. You're always going to have to be recruiting. But the responsibility is on your shoulders. And it's, it's hard to kind of delegate some of that stuff. But if you delegate it, just remember that person's going to disappear at some point. And if you want to continue doing that thing, you know, like when we had the, um, you know, if you have, have a network like I do where you recruit hosts, they may be on your network for a lot of years, like Boss Hog of Liberty, Brian Nichols, or they may be around for six months. Uh, and so if you have a goal of having five active podcasts on your network, you better be recruiting and making sure that you have six or seven. So when the when the inevitable happens that somebody else isn't as committed or their life changes or they're just kind of done with the experiment and the hobby, then you as a business owner have somebody to slot in there. Or if somebody is doing your Canva images to promote your podcast on social media, that's an important thing, right? Well, you better have somebody, If you just have open dialogue with those people and say, hey, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. You know, when you feel like you're ready, you'll, you'll kind of know they're not ready to keep doing it when they haven't updated it in like three or four weeks. And they're like, oh man, I'm so sorry. Give them what they want, which is release them from the responsibility. Be cool about it. Be friendly. You know, um, not everybody's going to stick with the group project for a long time. You've got to evolve as you, as your show evolves. So this is an important thing. Like your show, my show is totally different. It started out as a Libertarian Party of Indiana podcast for college students to reach out to college students because it was a new technology that mainly young people were using. And I figured it'd be a good way to kind of get our message out as an organization to college students. Well, it didn't work. <laughs> By about episode four, it was very clear nobody was nobody in the college libertarian space was even remotely interested. But I kind of had fun doing it with my co-host, so we just kept doing it. And it has evolved into something that's, you know, it, it's not about college libertarians in Indiana is, anymore, is it? It's about dissecting the news from an independent point of view to help people understand the context of current events. And it took a lot of personal evolution and effort to get to that point a lot of listening to my audience and a lot of trying new things and being afraid to fail in front of other people and giving up some of those sacred cows kind of saying yeah this was our identity or this was the type of show that we did but you know we were a comedy show for libertarians for a long time and then i just kind of outgrew that right and it wasn't that anymore and the thing that people liked more than that was the fact that we were kind of informing them in a very, you know, more straight laced point of view. Um, and so I had to be afraid to kind of let go what I knew was working to evolve it to a place where I, I'm at now where you people have a better idea of what I do. They're more willing to give me radio interviews. They're more willing to listen to me as a serious person than when I'm making fart jokes. Um but that's part of the personal evolution of me and the show. Uh, next lesson is obsess over the value that you're giving to your listener. It's really important for you to know what value you're giving. I talk about this all the time and give them that value. I won't belabor the point because I talked about it earlier, but this is a really important thing. The content on the air is more important than any other aspect in the business, right? So the show is more important than the Facebook page. The show is more important than the new idea. The show is more important than the podcast network. The show is more important than, uh, you know, video, right? So you have that anchor piece of content. For me, it's always audio podcasting. I've got a lot of websites that are attached to that kind of stuff. The thing that's most important is making sure that that audio podcast is really good. 
You got to prioritize what your anchor piece of content is above all else. Last one, have fun. Just enjoy it. It's a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. Don't put pressure on yourself. You should be consistent. You should do a show every week. You should do a show when you make that promise to the listeners. It's important. If you can't get it done that week, don't kill yourself. Right? <laughs> it's the 80-20 rule. My friend Michael Matthews, who's not my friend, I've never met him, but I listen to his podcast and I think he's my friend, talks about in his new diet book, Muscle, Muscle for Life, dieting's 80% success and you're going to fail 20% of the time and just be gentle with yourself when you fail that 20% of the time. Same rule applies here. Uh, 2014, I was going through a divorce. I couldn't get out an episode sometimes for a month. But I didn't close down my podcast and stop doing it. I came back to it. I've always felt a sense of like, all right, I need a break for a couple weeks. But I'm going to keep coming back and doing it. And the audience is forgiving of that. Uh, if you take two months, they're not as forgiving and they might drop you. But the, the, the people who are hardcore are still going to keep you in their feed. So just be gentle with yourself and have fun doing it. If you're not having fun, then don't do it. You know, I mean, for me, it's... It's generally fun to read the news and talk about it and read history and talk about how history applies to, to politics. I'd be doing it with a podcast or no podcast. So for me, that's fun. I'm just kind of being more disciplined with it to structure it so it comes out on the air. But that structure to me is fun, right? So don't kill yourself. You know, it's it's e even at the level that I'm at, you've got to be serious about it. There are people that are paying me to do this stuff. So... I think of it as a job, as a responsibility, but at the end of the day, the point is to have fun. So thank you so much for listening. I hope that you got some value out of this. If you did, please share this. The only way to grow for a small new brand like podcasting and platforms or your podcast is to get people to talk about it because organic growth on social media isn't the same thing as it used to be uh, in the way that I built We Are Libertarians uh, and word of mouth is king. So if you are out there and you're listening and you're like man i want more of this please share it tag us we'll retweet you and give you a little bit of exposure i also want to recommend you go to podcastingplatforms.com i changed the website around sign up for the email newsletter uh, there's a new membership we've got a slack going with a bunch of other new podcasters that you can uh, hang out with and talk with and then there's also going to be a special bonus show every month, including all those members. So please sign up now at podcastingandplatforms.com. Don't miss out. And thank you. We will see you again next Wednesday.